Hey everybody, welcome back to Peachy Disc Golf. Today, I am going to be heading to Chattahoochee Point Park in order to play a little six hole challenge to try out the brand new Berg X. We're also going to compare it against the regular Berg. All right, well, one of the most popular approach discs, if you look anywhere online, is going to be this, the Castaplast Berg. This disc has gained a lot of notoriety recently. The numbers are 1102, so a one speed approach disc similar to the Glitch, but where the Glitch has seven glide and just stays in the air for days, the Berg is listed as only having one glide. It just falls straight out of the sky. The profile for the Berg, if you're unfamiliar, is pretty unique. You can sort of see it has a uh, pretty pronounced puddle top, and it is a very blunt looking disc as well. In the hand, it's very comfortable. I actually really like the way the Berg feels. This little puddle top sort of makes like a thumb track. It just feels really, really comfortable in the hand. But the main appeal for the Berg is that one glide. If you have a short approach shot, rather than throwing a touchy putter, you can reach for the Berg and throw almost full power and know it's not gonna go super far past the basket. Because of that low glide, it's just not gonna stay in the air. So it makes it, pretty easy for speed control because you don't really have to worry about speed control. You can just almost throw full power. So a lot of people really like the Berg for these short approach shots. And then just recently, I didn't even hear about this coming out or anything. The Berg X has come out. This is supposed to be a slightly more overstable Berg. I didn't hear anything about this. I don't throw any Castaplast discs right now. I don't have the Berg or anything in the bag. So I wasn't like paying attention to see if this was announced or anything, but it just seemed like this came out of nowhere. I saw on Facebook and other social media that stores were getting these in stock and that they were available. So luckily I was able to pick one up at Ace Time Disc Golf in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I was up there for work, managed to snag one before my flight home. So thanks for that. The Berg X is listed as 11 positive one, two. So it has a turn of positive one, meaning it's supposed to be pretty overstable then. Now I'm a little hesitant because most discs that have that listing, like the Malta comes to mind, doesn't really seem that overstable. I don't really know how, like what does a plus one mean, I guess, uh, versus like a zero. I don't, I don't really know. So I'm really curious to see how this disc will compare against the regular Berg. Again, I don't bag either of these discs. I haven't thrown them before. I've thrown the Berg only a handful of times. Hand feel wise, the Berg X feels very similar in the hand. I'll try to put a picture up showing both of these discs, but looking at them, I can sort of see that the Berg X, the rim is just a little more square and blunt, whereas the Berg has more of a rounded side profile. Not by much, very similar depths, parting lines look about the same. In the hand, if I'm holding one or the other, they feel identical. So we're gonna head to Chattahoochee Point Park. We're gonna play just a little six hole challenge and we're gonna see, is the Berg X significantly more overstable than the Berg? And will I potentially be bagging one of these? So let's go head to hole one. All right, future Chris here. I found out while editing this video that my microphone was not working and I didn't have any backup recording. So we're gonna be doing a little voiceover here. Hopefully I can remember everything that's going on. Hole one is 180 feet, par three. I'm gonna be throwing the Berg first and then the Berg X second here. We're gonna be going down the right gap. So here we are going with the Berg, probably a little bit of hyzer here. Yeah, and you can see nice flight. Definitely not much glide on that. It just sort of wanted to go up and then come immediately down. It doesn't stay up in the air very long. And it had sort of a nice arcing hyzer the whole way through. So now we're gonna be going with the Berg X second here. Try to replicate that line and see if it's a little more overstable or not. I definitely threw this one out a little bit wider. I think I put a little more hyzer as well. And we'll see in just a second here, when we get to the two discs, they are right on top of each other. Very similar distances. It does seem like the Berg X might have just a hair more overstability, but couldn't really tell off of that. Try putting real quick with both of these here. Pretty good putt. Putting is definitely a little awkward with the Bergs. Both of them feel very similar in the hand. It's not the most comfortable putter grip here, but it's also not the worst. <laughs> Able to get two nice little birdies here to kick off the day with both the Berg and the Berg X. 
So hole six here is 235 feet. It's a par three, wide open shot here. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get this distance with the Berg. I think the Berg I can probably top out at 200 feet or so. So I'm really gonna be hammering on both of these discs to see if we can try to see that difference in stability or not. So here's the regular Berg here. You can see it's very similar flight to the first shot, just goes up, comes straight down, and then a nice sort of arcing right to left flight the entire way. So now we're gonna check the Berg X here to see if it's a little more overstable or not. Very similar in flight, honestly. I feel like I put similar amounts of hyzer on both of those throws and the Berg X does not seem like it's like amazingly more overstable. It's not like the Zone versus the Zone OS or anything like that. They're very, very similar. And just like before, you can see both discs right on top of each other. The Berg just a little bit further left than the Berg X, but almost identical distances. We're well into circle two here, so let's try to give these a couple step putts. Berg first, just a hair short and left. Next, we're going with the Berg X here. I already said this before, but putting with the Bergs is not the most comfortable here as I miss that putt as well. So two pars coming in. It's not my favorite to putt with. It's interesting though. It doesn't have like a crazy overstable putt flight or anything. And it's just some, the, the low glide just does not suit my putting stroke at all. I definitely prefer a little bit of glide with my putters. Obviously I'm putting with PA3, so not the most glide in the world, but the Bergs are not my favorite. Here we are at hole eight, par three, 215 feet. Basket is off to the left in line with those little pine trees. We do wanna watch out for the big tree on the right though, because there are some low hanging branches, but I feel like with the Berg here, it's not gonna to be too big of a problem because it's not gonna stay in the air that long. By the time it reaches that tree, it's already gonna be descending. So Berg still with the box. Pretty nice release here. And you can see same flight. It's a very dependable flight, just a nice arcing right to left shot, very dependable. Next up, we're gonna try the Berg X. See if it's more overstable. So far, it, it might have a tick more overstability, but it's not like something that I'm just, it's not crazy overstable or anything like that. I do hang this out a little further to the right than the Berg, but you could see almost the same spot again, very similar, just past that tree. Might even be in the tree a little bit, but it's, uh, they're very similar discs so far. Yeah, and you can see here, both the Berg X and the Berg right next to each other, maybe two or three feet of difference. Berg X putting first, well outside the circle there. Another short left miss. Let's see, can the Berg get a stroke here? Oh, same thing, just a hair short again. So hole nine here is a par three, 180 feet. Another pretty open shot, just a couple of little trees scattered in the fairway here. So I think this is gonna be a pretty ideal shot for both of the Bergs here because, I, like I said, I think I can maybe get the Berg at 200 feet. So this being less than 200 feet, if I throw a nice full power shot, we should get pretty close to the basket. So Berg still with the box here. Up and at it, and you can see just a little gentle fade. Nice, pretty straight flyer, honestly. That one I kept a little bit flatter than some of my other throws. Didn't really want to turn over or anything, and it's not like crazy overstable where it's going to finish hard to the left. Berg X here, unfortunately I throw a little too direct at the basket, so I'm not able to give it a good ace run, and you can see I'm sort of punished for that now. Way off to the left here. Circle's edge putt almost, probably nah, 25 feet or so. Definitely a makeable putt, but with the Berg, gonna be tough. Just a little right and short. Hits the cage, didn't bounce in. Berg, just a tap in here. This is like a five foot putt. You should be able to make this with no problem. So the Berg is gonna be taking a stroke. Now, that's not to say here that the Berg is a better disc than the Berg X. That's just definitely user error there. But Berg taking a stroke in this challenge. Hole 10 is only 205 feet, it's a par three. You would expect me to get decently close with putters, but for some reason, this hole always feels like it plays longer than it is. It is slightly uphill. I normally have to go with a mid-range here, so 
We're gonna try the Bergs out, try to get them as close as possible. Berg is gonna be up first with that one stroke advantage. Here there is a little bit of a headwind and you can see that the Berg does slightly turn over a bit to the right and it also just gets completely knocked down. It does not stay in the air at all. Berg X here, can it fight the wind a little better? It sure does. It carries a nice straight flight. I did throw that a little bit lower and it dropped a little bit faster though. So distance wise though, it actually outperformed the Berg just a little bit ahead. And here, instead of some putts, I'm gonna actually try doing some like light throw-ins. This is sort of one of the key features of the Berg with that low glide. You can see I actually put a good bit of power into that throw, but I only went past the basket like five feet. That's still a very easy putt coming up. So the, the low glide is really coming in for these short approaches. If it's just outside of your putt range, you can give it a little run. And that one hits the pole with the Berg X. So we should be able to come away with a couple of easy pars here, but I get the appeal for the Berg with that low glide there. It's just like if you have a 50 to 100 foot approach shot, you don't have to really worry about that distance control. All right, last hole of the challenge here is hole 14, 190 feet, par three, a nice easy hole again, just that one tree to miss right in front of the tee pad. Another pretty ideal shot for the Bergs here. You're gonna be able to throw full power, hopefully get them close to the basket. The Berg still has a one stroke advantage, so we're starting off with that. I'm gonna be giving these full power throws here. Berg is up, nice and straight flight. Oh, and the wind just knocks it straight down into the ground. I thought that was gonna be a pretty good shot. The wind just really knocked it down. Can the Berg X do better? I throw it a little bit lower, but I think I got a little more power in and it just fights the wind a little bit better. That one is parked for a nice easy tap in for birdie. So here you can see with the Berg, we got a bit of a tester. We're looking at like 15 feet or so. Gotta make it if we wanna stay ahead of the Berg X and I just give it the worst putt of my life. So uncommitted. The Berg X gonna be taking a stroke here and we're gonna have a nice tie finish, but we're not gonna finish up right there. I was recording another video here at an open field, so I thought, why not bring the Bergs with me? Give them both some full power throws in the open field without having to worry about any obstacles or anything like that. Let's see if we can find that over stability with the Berg X. So. Starting with the Berg here, full power throw. Really nice throw. You can see, <laughs> even with like a nice full power throw like that, it doesn't really have a lot of glide. Like it definitely can get some good distance, but it's just gonna drop out of the sky. Here's the Berg X here, and that just drops even faster. I thought that was a pretty good throw as well. But this one, you can see when we collect them, the Berg X is significantly shorter than the Berg, maybe 50 feet or so. So I was able to get a little bit better rip with the Berg here. There was a good bit of tailwind on this throw as well. So maybe there was a little more wind with the Berg versus the Berg X, but interesting. Now we're going the opposite direction here, starting with the Berg, pretty good shot. The wind died down just a little bit here. So it's not bouncing around the disc too much. Next up, Berg X, final throw of the day. Similar power. Very similar flight and a very similar result. Both of those were right next to each other. I'm back home, so let me give you my final thoughts real quick about the Berg X and how it compares, in my opinion, against the regular Berg. So both of these discs feel amazing in the hand. I, I really think they're quite comfortable. They are like deeper than I usually would want to throw, but with this like little groove for the thumb track like thing, it feels amazing in the hand. And I'm able to get nice clean releases out of them. They feel great and like I said, there's not that much difference in the profiles. And flight-wise, they're both great flights. I'm just not really noticing that much difference between them. Like, if I see something with a positive one turn, I am expecting it to almost be a complete meat hook. But that is not the case with the Berg X. For my arm speed, it seems like both of these are almost the same. They're both going nice and straight with a little bit of baby fade at the end of the flight. The only time where I noticed the Berg X to maybe have a little bit more stability is in the wind. If, the, if there was a little bit more wind out while I was throwing, the Berg would get tossed around and have a little bit more wonky flight, whereas the Berg X would sort of stay true to that nice straight flight with a little bit of fade at the end. So because of that, if I were to choose one or the other, honestly, I probably would just go with the Berg X 
for my arm speed because I'm really not noticing, like I'm not finding that this is just completely more overstable than the Berg. I'm getting very similar distances with both of these discs and this one can just hold up to the wind a little bit better. Now, if you have a faster arm speed, you might find that the Berg, maybe it's a little flippier or something where you might want this Berg X to hold a little bit straighter. Let me know in the comments if you've tried out both of these. Do you have a preference? Do you find that the Berg X is more overstable than the Berg? Is it noticeable or just not that much? Uh, I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. Am I gonna bag the Berg? Cause I don't right now. That is an interesting question because I wasn't planning on it. I didn't think I needed it. And I still don't think I need it at all, but I really enjoyed throwing this Berg X and the regular Berg as well. Maybe I'll give it a little trial run in a side pocket of my bag or something just to try it out. I don't think it will stay in the bag that long. I think I would prefer just having nice controlled shots with like my A5 or my PX3 or my PA3, just a nice controlled putter shot. But it is nice being able to like have a short approach and know I can still go full power on the Berg and it'll, it won't blow past the basket. It does seem like it would be super nice. It's a lot of fun to throw. Again, very comfortable in the hand. I, I really, it really inspires confidence, honestly. Like, I don't feel like I'm gonna turn this over, or burn it out, or, or like have some kind of crazy shot. I know it's gonna be a nice clean release. It's gonna go nice and straight. It's gonna have a little bit of fade at the end. Uh, very dependable. So I think I might give it a little test run. Maybe I'll join the, uh, the Berg squad here. I really did enjoy testing these out. So. For that, I am thankful that I was able to get my hands on this Berg X just to give both of these discs a try and a fair shake. But that's gonna be it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't yet, I would greatly appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to the channel. We are so, so close to 1,000 subscribers. Once we hit that 1,000 subscriber mark, we are going to have a huge giveaway. We're gonna be giving out gift cards. We'll probably give away some discs as well. So definitely be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet so we can hit that 1,000 subscriber mark. If you enjoyed watching this video, give it a thumbs up and ring that notification bell so you can be notified when our next episode comes out. Until next time, guys, cheers.